Hello, today I'm going to show you how to log on to the website and input your items that you are wanting to sell at the next event. Here we are at the website and you will notice up at the top there is two big buttons. We're going to click on the one that says consigner login. On the next screen it shows us the deadline to have our items in. Please make sure you note the deadline and remember that you can print tags after the deadline but you cannot put any new items in to sell after the deadline. I'm going to click on the consigner login link. Now it is asking for my consigner number and my password. You should have created a password when you registered. That will be the password you are going to use. After I log on, it's going to bring me to the consigner home page. And here you're going to see different links to use. And I'm going to choose the link on the left side that says work with consigned inventory. So I'm going to click on that link. And now it is bringing me to another screen. If I have consigned in the past, I may have inventory still in the system. Those items would be classified as inactive inventory. If you wish to sell those items again and they already have the tags on them from the past sale, you can click on this link to activate them. But today I'm going to show you how to put in a new item. So this very top link, work with my consign items, it's where I add items that I want to sell. So I'm going to click on this top link. And this is the screen that I'm actually going to use to enter my items. I have a category, I have a size, description line, a place for the price, and a box for check to discount or checks to donate. So let's actually input an item here. Let's choose a category. I am going to put in an article of clothing, girls clothing. Now I need to choose a size. I have all different sizes here. I'm going to put in one that is a size 2T. Now on the description line, I need to put in something about the item. The more description you give, the better chance we are going to have to find your item in the system if your tag falls off. If the tag for some reason falls off your item and someone wishes to purchase it and we can't find the tag, we can search the inventory by the description line. So if you just put in shirt, we're not going to be able to find the tag. But if you be, are more descriptive and say it is an old navy tan shirt. And then if I need more room, I could go on the bottom and I could say with flowers. With that kind of description, the chances of us finding your item in inventory is going to be high. Now next is my price. It needs to be at least a dollar. And you can go in increments of 50 cents. So I'm going to say I want two dollars for this Old Navy shirt. Here it says quantity. You are not usually going to mess with this button unless you have identical items. Say I had two twin, twin girls and they both had the exact same shirt and I'm selling both of those shirts. I could change the quantity to two and it would make two of these items appear in my inventory. But if I don't have that, most people aren't going to have multiple of the same item, I'm going to leave the quantity at one. Now it's going to ask me, do I want this to go discount on the last day? Um, if you do, you need to check the box. I'm going to say yes, I want it to discount. Next is, do I want it to go to be donated at the end? 
or am I going to come back and pick this item up if it doesn't sell? I'm going to check that I do want it to be donated. I don't want it back. Now I'm going to hit submit. And I will scroll down and I'll show you down here at the bottom it has my old navy shirt listed in the system. Okay, so let's put in another item. This time let's put in a let's put in a puzzle. And I don't need a size for a puzzle, so I'm going to put leave blank. Now I'm going to put in my description. I have a Melissa and Doug and it's a car sound puzzle. All right, and now I'm going to I want I want three dollars for this puzzle, and I want it to go discount. But this one, I'm going to uncheck the donate. I want this puzzle back if it doesn't sell. So I'm going to uncheck that and then hit submit. And then down at the bottom, you can see that my puzzle is now listed down in my inventory. Also note that down at the bottom it's just going to show the last five items that you have inputted. If you want to see all of your items, up here at the top there is a little box you can check to display all the items. So if I wanted to see all I could click that box. But I'm good for just seeing the five for now. Alright, as I'm looking at the last five items I've inputted, I noticed, oh, I, I made a mistake on the girl's shirt. It's not a size 2T, it's a size 3T. Well, let's edit that item. So I'm going to go here to the edit. And as you scroll down, it gives me a place where I can now edit this. I'm going to change the size and change it to a size 3T. I'm going to, I don't need to edit the price or anything else. Now I'm going to hit update this item. And as you can see, now it is updated and the size is now correct. All right, so I can keep inputting items. And when I am done inputting items, if I need to take a break or I'm just finished, there's a button here that says, I'm finished for now. So I'm going to click on this button and it brings me back to the consigner um, screen. And you please note you don't have to put all your inventory in at once. You can do a little bit here and a little bit there. If you want to sit down and just put in your toy items one day, then you can come back two days, three days, a week later, whatever time, and put in maybe your shoes that you want to sell. So you can do it a little bit by little bit, or some people like to prefer to do it all at once. It's totally up to you which way you want to do it. So now let's say I'm ready to print my tags. I've done putting in my items. I'm ready to print. Here you can see it says print tags and I have three choices. I can print all my tags at once or maybe I've already printed some tags and I just need to print uh, a few tags that I haven't printed yet then I can click the print selected tags and I would choose which ones I need to print. And then this one here is print all tags as a PDF. So I could that would open in a new window for me to print through Adobe. Alright. And also note here it says you need to have your disable you disable your pop-up blockers because what's going to happen is your tags are going to open up in a new window you to print from and if you have a pop-up blocker it is going to stop that window from opening and you won't be able to print so I'm going to say I'm going to print all my tags I'm going to click this link right here and here are all my tags that opened up in a new window and I can scroll down they print six to a page and there are all my tags that I need to print and I would just go to print
and then hit print again and my tags would print. Now when you are printing your tags, please make sure you're not printing on the highest setting. What happens is when you print on the highest setting, especially with an inkjet printer, that inkjet printer will put out a lot of ink to make it high quality. And when you get those barcodes and those little spaces between the lines, it puts out too much ink and the barcode becomes unreadable by our scanners. So it's best to choose just a, a normal print setting, not the draft setting, that would be too light, but just a normal print setting. That way it won't print the barcode too dark for our scanners. And it needs to be printed on cardstock paper. The reason for that is the cardstock is a thicker paper and it will prevent it from the tag from coming off, especially the clothing when you're safety pinning it on. If you use regular paper, it's easier for the tag to tear and get lost from the item. The cardstock paper is going to be thicker and the tag is more likely to stay on the item. So then I would just print my tags and once they're printed, I'm just going to cut them apart and put them on my items. And then all I need to do is bring them into the sale.